Good to have uh, Reverend Steve Berry with us today, and his wife Jackie is back there. Welcome to them. Very much. Good to have them. <laughs> Our opening hymn this morning is 436. Lift up your heads.
The Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. them through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. Amen. please be seated a reading from the book of Amos this is what the Lord God showed me the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass, pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent the king Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. <clears throat> then, then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, 
but I am a herdsman and a dresser of the sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people of Israel the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Our response to the reading is a portion of Psalm 85. Together, I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The second reading is Mark 6, 14 through 29. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Sorry. That was mine. Sorry. Ephesians. Oh, you, you know what? You want this? Oh, I found it. Okay. Okay. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth. That's not it either. Is it? No. 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 It ends with blessing. Yeah. What they, as a, a way of liturgical notes. <laughs> when they printed this book, they sometimes didn't get it right. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and use that. Okay. It doesn't. I'm not preaching on that one, so it's not as pretty. <laughs> okay, this is a reading from Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. The sequence hymn for today is number 372. 
Street 72. <laughs> of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. 
When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. So she went and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent for soldiers of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about this, they came and took his body and they laid him in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words that are spoken and the words that are heard be in the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's topic, truth-telling. That's what prophets do. Prophets are men and women of every age whom God sends to warn us and urge us to turn from our wrongdoing and its consequences. And prophecy is a fundamental ministry of the church. Maybe not our favorite, but nevertheless a fundamental one. My Old Testament Professor Walter Brueggemann summarized the prophetic ministry of prophecy this way, quote, The prophetic tasks of the church are to tell the truth in a society that lives in illusion, grieve in a society that practices denial, and express hope in a society that lives in despair. If you look in the back of the prayer book at the Catechism, you'll see that it states God reveals himself and his will through nature, history, saints, and especially the prophets of ancient Israel. So, this morning, let's spend some time reflecting on prophecy. Those people who are unafraid to speak truth to power. And the two we'll look at are the two that we heard about, Amos and John the Baptizer. So let's start with the Amos text from Amos 7. There's actually two kinds of prophets in this reading, Amos and Amaziah. Now, Amaziah was a card-carrying member of the establishment. He was a loyal member of the king's Amen corner, and that brought him a lot of royal perks and privileges, you can be sure. So. He specialized in what's called smooth-talking prophecy, so as not to offend the king. In essence, he was saying, hey, don't worry, Jeroboam, things are just fine. There's prosperity, the army is strong, life is good. Amos, on the other hand, saw things differently and looked beyond the superficial. Israel, indeed, might have had some prosperity and militarily strong, but the nation had become rotten at the core. Amos declared Israel was seriously out of plumb, out of alignment with God's will. Men and women at every level of society, if you read this book, you will be startled. But at every level of society, they had lost sight of God's demand for justice and mercy and love. There was widespread cheating and stealing. Oppressing and enslave, enslaving the poor was a common practice. And Israel was so out of plumb, so out of kelter, that it was about to topple, and eventually would. Amos 
Now Amos has a heart for Israel, and that's very important in the prophetic ministry. He really wanted Israel to repent. He urged them to seek good, not evil, to hate evil, and to establish justice. But because Israel had a hard heart, it refused to do these things, and thus it was doomed. He spoke tough but true words. So after speaking truth to power at Bethel, guess what happened to Amos? He was run out of the country by Amaziah, the leader of King Jeroboam's Amen Corner. Now we do not know his fate after that. We do know what happened to John the baptizer, but let's skip that part of the story for just a moment. Suffice to say, John had a way with words. He specialized in fire and brimstone. Those of you who are familiar with the author Frederick Beekner might have encountered these words where he describes John's preaching this way. Quote, the kingdom was coming all right, but you, if you thought it was going to be a pink tea, you'd better think again. If you didn't shape up, God would give you the axe like an elm with the blight or toss you into the incinerator like chaff. Your only hope was to clean up your life as if your life depended upon it, which it did, and get baptized in a hurry as a sign that you had. So it didn't take John, who preached like that, to get crosswise with the establishment and especially with Herod Antipas. Now I've got to give you a footnote here. He's called Herod. Not the Herod of our Lord's birth, but Herod Antipas, a son of the original Herod. But by this time, Herod had become something of a title. Just like Caesar had become a title. Caesar Augustus and, you know. So, okay. So it was Herod Antipas. John apparently had hoped that Herod Antipas would shape up. Do the right things. But John crossed a very serious red line <clears throat> when he confronted the king about marrying his brother's widow. Something that the Torah in Leviticus 2 specifically says is a big no-no. And in fact, his marriage had scandalized the people of Judea, Galilee, and environs. So given the gravity of the charges made by John, Herod Antipas' response actually seems rather mild. He seemed, as the text points out today, intrigued by John and what John was saying. So he put John in what we might call protective custody. I mean, why would he not execute him? Well, because maybe he wanted to hear more from John. He thought John was a man of God. But that was not to be the case. And here's where the story gets really ugly. He threw himself a party. He threw himself a birthday party. I guess no one else would do it for him. <laughs> he got plastered with too much wine, and he invited his stepdaughter to do a, probably a provocative dance, but we don't know that for sure. But movies portray it that way. <laughs> Oh, we can't turn down Hollywood's portrayal of her dancing. But anyway, it dazzled all the guests, and it immensely pleased the king. Now remember, his mind is pretty fogged by wine, and so he promises her anything that she might want. An amazingly stupid thing to do. So she consults with her mother, and she says, go ask for John's death. Now, the king is afraid of losing face in front of all his entourage. So, what do you think the king does? He caves in. And before the birthday bash is over, John's head was presented to him on a platter. John, John the baptizer, should really be known as John the truth teller. Really. Well, now let's look at the meaning of these lessons. What, what do they tell us who live in July 2021? Well, it reveals that truth-telling can be hazardous to your health. <laughs> it could cost you, you could get run out 
like Amos, or you can lose your head like John. When we ground ourselves, when we center ourselves in God's will, and we speak to others about the dangers of injustice, oppression, power, prestige, you know, we just might find ourselves at odds with others. And it could be in our own family, or it could be something greater, say, on the state or the national level. But God's kingdom is about justice, peace, equality, compassion, good governance, caring for others, and caring for this fragile earth, our island home. Those values are not necessarily what people always have in mind. The problem is that leaders all too easily get swept into the agenda of special interest groups and that's why profits are necessary. There's another danger as well. And that's when profits themselves succumb to the powers and principalities and compromise their values. That's why we need to remain clear about our primary allegiance to God, to God's reign, to God's values, and that they must be first and then inform how we speak to others and act among others. How do we do that? Are you familiar with the very common saying, what would Jesus do? <laughs> you know, those shirts, pencils, hats, you know, keychains, with all that on, okay? What would Jesus do? It's really good advice, but you better know Jesus before you try to answer the question. <laughs> And how do we get to know Jesus better? Hey, come to St. James Episcopal Church and other communities like this. Because this and places like St. James are places where we can meet Jesus in word and sacrament and fellowship and companionship and get tutored, trained, and taught in God's values. You know, like the Sermon on the Mount, things like that, you know, Good Samaritan, you know, Prodigal Son, you know, there's... Jesus has a lot to teach us. We come to know God's will through prayer and worship and proclaiming the gospel and promoting justice, peace, and love. Living the life that Jesus wants for us can be costly. Will I or won't I stand up for the right thing? Moments like that will cause deep soul searching in any one of us. Do I value my standing in the community more than I do the truth? Am I so inclined to conflict avoidance that I cause injury to others by my inaction? Do I prefer stability and safety more than transformation? Is my inner life and my outer life out of plumb, out of alignment? These are personal questions on one hand, but very public, very public questions on the other. When I choose silence for the sake of personal safety and convenience, what have I really done? When I decide that justice is too difficult it's too chaotic or too costly for me to pursue. Who suffers? Those are gospel questions. They're the questions I think Amos and John the baptizer, John the truth teller, would ask of you and me. And I think they're also the questions that Jesus would ask each of us. Amen. 
I invite us to stand and profess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Prayers of the people today are on page uh, 388, form 4. <clears throat> Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources <coughs> rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of salvation. And today we will pray for Helen, Marnie, Melis Melisani, Stephen, Tom Reed, Susan, Tom Plavanic, Julie and Rich, Caleb, Melissa, Harry, Carl Jensen, Kitty, Elma Decker, Tom, Mark, Elizabeth, Aaron Copeman, Kathleen Woodward, Kath, uh, Lee uh, Kuno, Heather, Tracy, Johanna, Gabby Olson, Nadine Rutherford, Dorothy, Shana Kellogg, Brian S., Lauren, Larry, Shelley, Sheila Stearns, Roger Lohr, April, Linda Porter, John Northey, Shark Cookson, Jack, Colin, Christina, 
Judy Fry, Rod Crane, Chris, Mary Brown, LaJada Clayton, Charles Nemitz, Bill, Mike Messina, Mary Jane and family, Gloria, Shay Trafton and family, Michael Huntley, Bill and Judith, Terry O'Fallon, Liz, Jim Devine, Stephen Yurusko, Kathy, Ed McCoy, Natasha, uh, <coughs> Ruana and Roman uh, Abundes, Dean Martin, Kathy, Elaine and the Harrington family, Stuart and Mary Kay Compton, Mike Sura, Jean Little, Haley, Nancy Fecky, Michael Shea, Becky, Katie Jackson, Mike McPhee, Angie Rubes, Jordan Michelle, Jermaine Stivers, Maria Whitcraft, Michael, Hannah, Jane Olson, Heidi, Joyce Cole, Jim o Jill Owens, Patrick, Tim Haney, Sam Orr, Mary, Tom Harrison, Nancy Surrett, Anne, Chad, Isaac, and Reuben. And for all those in recovery, and for all those serving in the military and their families, especially Seth Walters, Emily Olson, Kevin Anderson, and Brandon Anderson. For those worldwide and here in Fergus County suffering from and dying from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord. Are we going around? After everybody has shared the piece, uh, please be seated. It's time for the, uh, the announcements. 
And since I don't know what's going on, I'm going to defer to everybody. <laughs> well, I will say one thing. I'll add to the prayers that Jean has a delightful and wonderful holiday. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, for Jean. <laughs> Hey. Uh, Reverend Steve will be here next week, um, and as you might tell from his background, he's an old newspaper man. And I am old. Well, I, didn't, I was emphasizing newspaper man. So, <laughs> anyway, um, it's an opportunity to, at coffee next week if you'd like to, to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's going on. Uh, he has a good background, he wrote a lovely letter in the paper recently that is real helpful. Any other announcements for the week? There is coffee hour. Was Bernalou, was that? Oh, yes. Bernalou passed away. Bernalou Sedbrock died yesterday. So keep her in your prayers. Yeah, great. Great lady. She is uh, Jody Hamilton's mom. Right. You know, a long time member of St. James. I'd like to announce that um, we have the honor, Paul and I have the honor every other year or so, to host um, Don and Margaret Hunter's daughters in the number of three, Donna, uh, Norma, and Janice. And they're with us again, and they're right here today. So. Amen. Oh, birthdays. Well, I got to get over here to the microphone. And I, uh, Reverend Jean said, "Don't hop around. You know, hang out here." So, so uh, birthdays. Anniversary. How about an anniversary? Remembrance of a special occasion. Hearing none. <laughs> we'll have just a general Thanksgiving for all the blessings that God pours into our lives. So, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Amen. Amen. The offertory prayer hymn is 295-295 uh, two, two, in the hymnal. <clears throat>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Body of 
Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, life is short. There is so little time to befriend those we walk among. Therefore, make haste to be kind, swift to forgive, ready to love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is 686, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.